Mistakes were made in the 2017 draft, but today we go back and right those wrongs as we're going to be repicking for the 2017 NFL draft. And what's crack a lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love having that nice, beautiful football uh, discourse with y'all. Special thanks to uh, D. I Y O J for sponsoring the video. If you don't know what they are, well, shoot, check out this sucker. Look at this. They basically they make custom jerseys. Look, I got the the bro schmo on that sucker too. Uh, but they make custom jerseys, and if you go there, you can make your own jersey. It doesn't have to necessarily look like this, but hey, if you want this logo, hit me up in my Discord. I'll shoot you the PNG. But uh, yeah, you get to make your own jersey. They have football, basketball, uh, baseball. They have hoodies, hats, and all that. But use promo code BROSHMO to get that 10% off. Let's go ahead, get into this sucker. And is there really any other pick? The Cleveland Browns, they were a toilet of a franchise at this point. They needed a quarterback. Well, lucky for them, they're picking first overall, and Patrick Mahomes is in this draft. So I think this is the kind of easy one. You just go ahead and take Patrick Mahomes. Call it a day. You don't even – they pick again at 12. You don't even need that pick. You won the draft. You won the draft. Okay, the San Francisco 49ers. This one's interesting because it would be the 2017 season. I think it was like October, November. It had to be October because of the trade deadline. But they actually – traded for jimmy g so this is actually before that happened so instead of that let's just go ahead with the other best quarterback in this class being deshaun watson i know last year didn't look so great maybe he bounces back but regardless can't take away what he did in houston for all those years and i would say he's probably a better quarterback than jimmy g i guess we'll see what happens next year with uh watson but Going ahead, addressing the position now, because as you can see, the quality of quarterbacks in this class is uh, not a primo. Mitch Trubisky, uh, David Webb. We had a fun David Webb appearance uh, in the finale of that. What was it? It was the Eagles and the Giants. Uh, Peterman, he was good, right? Pick six machine. He was throwing touchdowns, though. He was throwing touchdowns. Cooper Rush, legendary Cowboys backup. But yeah, it's not a good class. Actually, Beathard's not a bad backup. Like he's a mid, I would say mid, but yeah, it's 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 not a good class, guys. Oh, Taysom Hill. <laughs> Need I say more? All right, we get the Chicago Bears, and I was looking at this roster, and I was like, you know what? Let's just take best player available. And this is before the Khalil Mack trade, but even then, their edge rushers there. They had like uh, uh, McPhee. Uh, I think they had Leonard Floyd as well, but still you can never have too much of a good thing. And I think McPhee was kind of more in a rotation role at this point, or, or at least he, he was up there in years. So he was going more towards that. So go ahead take the best player left on the board. The best player probably in this class. That's not a quarterback. It's kind of tough. Miles Garrett, TJ Watt. I'm going to go with Watt here. And uh, I think he would actually fit. I think it's Vic Fangio that's right there in Chicago during this time. So that would be a nice fit. The uh, Jacksonville Jag Wires. So I was like, man, Miles Garrett would be super fun. But this is when the Jags had that like dominant defense that actually led the team, I think, to the AFC championship game uh, with Blake Bortles. But, I mean, again, with not a quarterback on the board, can't really do anything about that. So, at the very least, maybe you get protection for your quarterback. Uh, I think this was the class that they snagged uh, Cam Robinson in the second round. Yeah, there he is. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and take Ryan Ramshack. You might be like, oh, hey, tackle, blah, blah, blah. He was playing left tackle at Wisconsin, so he could play either side. I ain't worried about that. Did, though, give a lot of consideration to just saying screw it and take Miles Garrett. And that's kind of what I'm going to do with the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to say screw it and take Miles Garrett. It's kind of the obvious choice. Uh, a lot of their pass rushers there either never develop or on their way out like uh, uh, Rackpo. So, yeah, Miles Garrett would be phenomenal. I'll take it. Sign me up. Okay, we got the New York Jets. And their secondary was really bad. 
this year. There, I think they just added Boris Claiborne, and he would be their corner one. That's pretty bad. I'm going to take the... This is really a toss-up for a lot of people. Like Some people like Lattimore. Some people like Murphy. Some people like White. Uh, I fall into the Humphrey category. I'm a huge mark for Marlon Humphrey. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. He could play outside. He could also play in the slot. So he would give them some versatility and some variety. So we're going to go ahead and snag him there. Okay, this one might be a... I don't think it's that hot of a take. Listen, I was stuck between two spots here. I was like, okay, we could go with a tackle because their right side's pretty bad and they have Russell Okun now. And again, this is during this time. So it's like, uh, Garrett Bowles, do I think he plays right? I mean, I could just go Taylor Moton. That would be fine. So that was a consideration. I also considered corner because uh, I want to say, did they pick up? No, no, no. I think they already had Michael Davis, but I did consider corner because just the corners here, Lattimore and White, those, those are two really good corners. This is actually a pretty all right corner class with the Dory Jackson, Awuzie, uh, Desmond Keane, but he's more of a slot. We got... Cameron Sutton, Rasul Douglas. But ultimately, I was like, you know what? They really don't have anyone out on a receiver outside of Keenan Allen. So and this is part of the Keenan Allen's career where it was like he had season ending injuries in the opener twice in two years or four years. So I was like, okay. So now I'm between uh, the top receivers here are cooper cup and chris godwin i feel like cooper cup is would is a very similar role to keenan allen so i went i i kind of lean godwin i'm a big godwin fan people are like oh he's not that good the dude's had over a thousand yards the last two seasons like he's he's really good it's not like he's often hurt he's missed a couple of games last two seasons but like when on the field he is just so freaking good and be fair they're kind of like freak injuries like rolling an ankle and such but i'm gonna take godwin which means i'm here with the carolina panthers and in this class they did select curtis samuel which is fine but uh let's just get better curtis samuel in cooper cup their receivers at this time were kelvin beach yeah kelvin beachum and devin funches so yeah they're, they're pretty bad at receiver <laughs> Uh, all right, so we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Andrew Whitworth and Kevin Zeitler just left via free agency. So offensive line talent's kind of a premium. Unfortunately, this offensive interior class is really bad. Like Forrest Lamp, Dan Feeney, uh, Deion Dawkins ends up being a left tackle. And he's actually pretty solid. We probably see him later in this draft. Uh, Elf, Elf line. He was really good his rookie year at center. They moved him a guard. Wasn't nearly as good. Ethan Posick was kind of a late bloomer. But Roye has been banged up last two years. Uh, it's, it's a bad class, guys. It's just a bad offensive interior class. So we have to go with the tackle position. And Garrett Bowles had a kind of a rough few years, like a couple of years in the league to start off with. Like he was just a hold-in penalty nightmare he's cleaned up a lot i would say he's one of the top 15 tackles in the league now so we're gonna go ahead snag him here for the Bengals. and guess what you won't have to worry about tackle problems once you get burrow right okay this is where the i believe it was the chiefs moved up to get patrick mahomes we're not doing trades in this uh this is also i should have mentioned this earlier in the video this is based off the original the draft order going into the draft not trades that happened during the draft so uh the bills i mean fun fact you want to get tradavius white <laughs> at pick 27 at, at, in this draft so it just makes sense like considering how good he's been for the bills just to go ahead and snag him here while we can the Saints, this one's very interesting because, like, I, I, te I tend to 
I, I was like looking at this team and I was like, man, they could use probably some defenders here, like uh, maybe some help with uh, pass rush corner, obviously. But I was like, man, this de th this class is so much better in terms of good defensive players that I feel confident that I could get one at 32, which is their next pick. I believe it's 32, right? It is 32. So maybe take a bit of a luxury pick here. I ain't talking running back. Calm down. Uh, though, I mean, because this was the a banger draft for the Saints. Ryan Ramshack, Alvin Kamara, Marshawn Lattimore. Like, it was just really good. Marcus Williams. Uh, you're not going to get all these guys in a redraft, unfortunately. But we could get one of the best tight ends in the league in George Kittle. We really, really can. Uh, the tight end they got currently, Kobe Fleener, the former Colt. He's actually on his... He, he will retire after the 2017 season, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and snag... Uh, Kittle, bit of a luxury pick. Uh, to be fair, they really only have, I think, Michael Thomas at receiver. So uh, we, we could have went receiver too, but like after Cup and Godwin, there's kind of a drop off. Like you got Mike Williams, and then it's another drop off. And I'd rather just go ahead with Kittle. He is just phenomenal. Okay, this is pick two of the Cleveland Browns. We hit a home run with. Patrick Mahomes and looking at this defense, this defense is terrible. Could literally pick whatever defender I want. And I'm going to go with Marshawn Lattimore because corner matters. Get in. Uh, it's such a volatile position. You want to just make sure you have a ton of good talent there, good competition, a good cornerback room in general. The Arizona Cardinals. I think this pick was Hassan Reddick. And for like the first like three years, they had no idea how to use Hassan Reddick. So I don't want to give them that. Instead, I think I'm going to go with the defensive line. Like Jonathan Allen is a top five interior player uh, in the league. Pairing him up with, because they're currently running a 3-4 defense. Pairing him up with Corey Peters just sounds really, really sexy. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Philadelphia Eagles. The, this one, I was like, man, I could look a bit of a luxury pick here because, honestly, this team's really stacked. They got a lot of good players there. I thought maybe Marcus Williams at safety because I love Marcus Williams. I think he's a phenomenal player. Uh, but, I mean, there's actually a lot of good safeties in this draft. If you go look at it, you got Buda Baker, Jamal Adams, Eddie Jackson. Uh, even if you go like later, you got like Xavier Woods. So it's like, this is a good safety class. We don't have to grab one now. So I was really, th like, really thinking, really contemplating. And I think ultimately I settled on going with Hassan Reddick because we already, I know it's a different coaching staff here in Philly right now, but like, he's just been, he was so good for him and you're, and you're one of his contract. Like, let's try to re, let's try to re. Get that magic going, man. Let's try to get that magic going. It is a bit of a luxury pick. Uh, I wanted to contemplate running back, but I was like, can I just trade down if that if that's what I'm really considering? I and you can be like, oh, there, there's so many good running backs in this class. That's the problem. There's so many good ones. Like why, why? Like it's not like there's a Bijan and then the rest of the class. Like we have Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, Kareem Hunt. James, Connor, Jamal Williams, like it's kind of an embarrassment of riches. So it's going to get pushed down the board, especially if with me drafting here, who thinks running back's just a less valuable position. Okay. We got the Indianapolis Colts on the board here. Ultimately, I was like, let's just get Andrew Luck help. And this is before Braden Smith. I think Braden Smith is the following year. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Taylor Moton to pair up with Anthony. Uh, what's it? Constanzo, right? Oh, I can't remember. Regardless, I'm going to get a good tackle duo there for Andrew Luck. And maybe he won't retire. Okay, Baltimore Ravens. So I was looking at the roster and this is where I was like, okay, there's they, they pick up Chuck Clark in this draft, which is another safety I didn't mention. They pick him up later, 
and he kind of has to like emerge because they're old and they're beat up at safety. Eric Weddle, old, um, but still like he play he, he he his play doesn't really fall off. So it's like, but Tony Jefferson, this is where part of his career where he starts really getting banged up. So okay, we could address safety and. Y'all already know, I've been saying it. I love Marcus Williams. Like, this guy's a true center fielder. They picked him up via free agency. Let's just do it uh, four years earlier. Okay, the Washington, uh, whatever the hell you want to call them. They weren't the commanders at this time. Uh, but they were, uh, they, they were another team. They were another team, I'll say that. Uh... Man, Mike Williams was a big consideration because their receiving room was bad. Oh, man, the receiving room was really, really bad. And I'm not going to lie. Part of me was like, because the offensive line is not that bad either. And I was like, or it's not that bad in general. And I was like, I could kind of justify getting a running back here. Pair up with, they got Robert Kelly, who's more of this bruiser. So like getting maybe a Christian McCaffrey also kind of serves as a running or as a wide receiver. Ultimately, I was like, this is a good safety class. But, if, and, and this is the thing, man. Washington was really, like, their safety position was really bad. It really was. It just wasn't good. And, I, man, Buda Baker kind of is a game changer. So, we're going to go ahead and just get him, man. We're just going to go ahead and grab him. So, a little run on safeties right there. All right, we're back here with the Tennessee Titans. And Washington didn't do it, but I'm going to do it because Tennessee literally has no receivers. Uh, I think uh, Kendall Wright, he just left. They have Matthews, but he's really just a long threat. They have Eric Decker, who's kind of the twilight of his career. So... Yeah, this will be the Mike Williams pick. So they walk away from this draft with Miles Garrett, Mike Williams. Feels feels like a good good draft class for the Titans. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, man. And I was looking at this 2017 team, and I was like, man. They're kind of bad at a lot of spots. <laughs> Outside of receiver, <laughs> they're kind of bad at a lot of spots. So this was a bit tough. And I was like, maybe best player available. And I was looking at like maybe the edge class that kind of lacked pass rush there. I was like, man, there's not really a lot of great options. Carl Lawson has the injury concerns. Uh, Basham's like a fine like depth. You could say the same thing about Smoot. But then we get here to uh, uh, Trey Hendrickson, who a uh, mama mia, he would be nice for this squad. So we're going to go ahead and snag him here for the Buccaneers. Again, best player available. Uh, I think the other guy I considered, because they weren't that great at tackle. They had, was it Dachson and, or Dotson and, I can't even remember. But yeah, uh, I think I was considering, um, yeah, he's not here, but. Uh, there we go. Dion Dawkins for that pick and moving him to left tackle. But man, it's really bothering me. Who were those? Like Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2017 depth chart. Who, who were their tackles? Donovan Smith. There we go. Donovan Smith and Damar Dots. I combined them. That's what happened. So Donovan Smith, who just left the team this year, uh, they just released him. And yeah, Dotson's kind. It was kind of getting old. Uh, they were all right on. Yeah, no, the offensive line is not that great. They got Ali Marpet, Jr. Sweezy. He's kind. Of, he's fine, but. Yeah, I don't know. We're on the Broncos now. Uh, the Denver Broncos, the defense was really loaded at this point, and I got a lot of kind of considered running back. Uh, what a loved quarterback they got right now. Trevor Simi, uh, Simeon and Paxton Lynch there right now, uh, at least at this point. But as as I told y'all, 
quarterbacks, con- you know, we're not taking another quarterback in this class. Uh, running back, again, was a consideration, but I was like, uh, well, you want the offensive line to kind of be tip top if you're going to consider a running back. So let's get the offensive line tip top. We get Deion Dawkins here who could play guard and tackle for the squad. So, yeah, we're going to snag him. And to be fair, like the offensive line class, it just falls off. The next best guy is Cam Robinson in this class. And I don't know if we're going to pick him. And I don't think, like, he's kind of a fringe first at this point. Yeah, he's been like, okay. But, I mean, that's, again, just speaks to how bad this offensive line class really was. Uh, the Detroit Lions. I'm going to channel my inner uh, Brad Holmes here. And I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take the first running back off the board, not running back two. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> why am I throwing shots? Dude, I love Brad Holmes. <laughs> Disagreed with this year's draft, uh, but I think the running back run might start here. Now we're looking at maybe teams that have more established offensive lines, especially the Lions. Their offensive line is actually pretty darn good here. So getting it like Christian McCaffrey could also serve as a receiving threat uh a couple of the other players i thought about here were cameron sudden uh tyus bowser who's just versatile but i think I'll, ultimately i just settled on christian mccaffrey for the lions the miami dolphins this is the uh adam gase era which uh if you don't know much about that uh it was hell it was hell welcome to adam gase his uh head coaching career absolute hell for if you're a fan of that team so the dolphins they could like they they needed a lot this team wasn't that good and unfortunately like offensively there's nothing i want to really address or nothing i feel like i can address here so looking at the defense and xavian howard is honestly the only solid corner on the squad so I'm going to go ahead and actually snag Cameron Ward where, or Cameron Ward. Cameron Sutton, look at me, I'm already preparing for 2024. Uh, Cameron Sutton, who could play inside and out. He's got good flexibility. He actually can really play wherever the defensive backfield. So it gives us a lot of versatility. The New York Giants don't know how they ended up picking 23, but they did because I was like, you look at this roster and be like, it's a bad roster. Like this team, it they nosedive in 2017, like so much so that they're picking second the following season. So with this, I'm just I'm like look at there like there's nothing that'll save this this se- this team season. Eli Manning's at the end of the rope. Uh, so I'm just like let's just get the probably the most talented player on the board. And that's for me, it's Jamal Adams. Like injuries have kind of derailed that last couple of years, but when healthy, man, he is a force. He really, really is. Okay, we got the Oakland Raiders. That's right, they're still in Oakland at this point. And again, I'm gonna I'm uh, I'm gonna go back to this corner class, this secondary class, because it's pretty darn good. And I really think uh where is he at? Chidobi Awuzi is or a woozy however you may say it uh is a really good fit to jack del rio who is the dc at the time so we're gonna go with him there and then we have the houston texans and this team's offensive line sucks literally i considered cam robinson here but Looking further into this, I was like, you know what? Right now, the DC for Houston is Mike Rabel. And a guy he worked with uh, in Tennessee as head coach was a Dory Jackson. So, and with this, you could slide Kareem Jackson, who's starting to get older, to safety, make that transition sooner. And then Kevin Johnson to uh, slot. And you still got... Jonathan Joseph. There we go. So we're going to grab a Dory Jackson. So that secondary is looking fierce. Something fierce. So we see a little run on uh, run on the secondary players. And I thought we were going to get a run on running backs. Just didn't work out that way. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks. So this is where the Seahawks actually move out of the first round. And their first selection ends up being Malik. Mc, was it McDwell? 
McDowell uh, ends up being a, a big, big miss. But, hey, this is a team that wanted to get a big, meaty boy. Let's get a big, meaty penetrator in. Where yet? you at? Where are you at? Dalvin, Dalvin Tomlinson, man. Man, he would be scary with the, uh, the Seahawk team. He really would. Okay, we got the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're actually going to go back to the safety well here. Man, yeah, yeah, you just see a nice run on on secondary players there. Look, we went we went four in a row. And then we picked a defensive line. And now we're back here picking another safety. Because Eric Berry, actually, this is near the end of his career. Uh, and I think uh, if you're going to have someone kind of play that center field role, Eddie Jackson's really good at that. So we're going to go ahead and snag him here. Okay, we got the Dallas Cowboys. Very interesting team, but I always go back to uh, receiver because I was looking at some of my past redrafts of this class, and it's always receiver for the Cowboys because, well, uh the receiver core is pretty terrible at this point. This is pre CD lamb, pre Amari Cooper, pre Michael Gallup, uh, Des Bryant's on the way out. Cole Beasley would be gone after I believe this season or the 2018 season. So we could go ahead and uh, just start adding guys there. So I think Juju is worth one of these fringe first round picks. So we're going to grab him there for, the Cowboys. Okay, we're here with the Green Bay Packers where who who selected two running backs in this class, mind you. They selected Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. Both end up being pretty solid picks. It was Jamal Williams, right? Or was it was it the Utah cat? No, it was Jamal Williams. Okay. Who am I thinking of? Joe Johnson or something? Maybe not. Regardless, uh, oh no, he went to the Niners. Okay, okay. So yeah, they select two actually pretty solid running backs here. So I think why not just, I don't know. Let's just get one great running back here. And I'm going to go with Alvin Kamara. Austin Eckler was a consideration, uh, but I wanted to go with the girthier back for the cold weather. And Kamara's just, man, he's just pretty darn good. Just. Hopefully he doesn't punch anybody <laughs> in Green Bay. The Philadelphia Eagles. This one was a very interesting one because the more I looked at this roster and what they needed, like I was thinking corner here, but the next guy up for me was Russell Douglas, who isn't a good scheme fit for Mike Tomlin's system. Uh, I did notice that the team just lost Lawrence Timmons, who went to the Dolphins and ended up crap in the bed, by the way. Uh, but Vince Williams actually stepped up in and did very nicely for a few years. However, it is in the 2017 season, Ryan Shazier has the injury that ends his career. And to be fair, there aren't many good linebackers in this class. So this was kind of a tough one because we're kind of drafted in hindsight here and knowing that Shazier goes down, it kind of changes what I want to do with this pick. Because we could look, look at this runner or this linebacker class zach cunningham he's kind of like a what a journeyman at this point uh ruben foster is actually killing it in the usfl uh ty spouser is more of an edge guy duke riley's a depth uh alex anzalone is like a bridge starter let's call it what it is but uh anthony walker's pretty darn good uh, Jayon Brown, I think, is one of the better coverage linebackers in the league. But I'm going to go with... Did I pass him? No, I didn't. He's still way down here. Matt Milano, who I, I'm going to say is head and shoulders the best linebacker in this class. I honest, honestly believe that. So in hindsight, we're going to do that for the Steelers. All right. The Atlanta... Falcons, uh, I think at this point they were trying to get Vic Beasley to not just be a pass rusher, just kind of be this all around athlete that could also drop back into coverage. And he's, he's just not that guy. Uh, you know who is he's, he's someone we mentioned. It's actually Ty, uh, Tyus Bowser. 
So we're going to go ahead and actually snag him for Atlanta. I was looking at him and it's like, this is where now the talent kind of like falls off. And maybe you see this run at running backs. And because a lot of the defenders are off the board, <laughs> a lot, a lot of them, which again, I took notes as I made each pick. And you might remember earlier, I said, okay, the Saints, there's a lot of good defensive players in this draft. We will just draft one at pick 32. And now we're here at pick 32. And man, I'll, we had that massive run on secondary players is kind of where I wanted to go. Uh, if we're looking, the corner class falls off. Like Sidney Jones, he's like a cornerback four or five. Desmond Keane's a slot. Lewis is a slot. Witherspoon's fine. Douglas, but is he a fit? Uh, Elder kind of fell off the face of the earth, didn't he? After he left Carolina. Uh, Kazi's really actually pretty sweet. Shaquille Griffin, I know he's coming off a down year with the Jags, but he's still pretty darn good. I don't even know where he went. Where did Shaquille Griffin go? Oh, he's still a free agent. Whoa. Woof. But yeah, it's just, it, it's not good. It's not good. So, like, the, the edge class isn't any better. We're, we're not looking at much here. We're not looking at much here, guys. So, it's kind of, un, kind of unfortunate. But it's like, I'm thinking, we grabbed Kittle. I considered maybe another receiver, but I didn't want to take like Curtis Samuel uh, this early. And I mean, there's a lot of good runbacks in this class. You did in this draft pair up Alvin Kamara with Mark Ingram. So let's go running back. And I think actually a good parent for Ingram, especially inside a dome is Austin Eckler, man. Low key, one of the best running backs in the class. Look at that. They gave us a D for both those picks, but our offense is kind of nuts. This is with Drew Brees. The offense is kind of nuts. I really thought the defensive talent would fall, but it just didn't. It really didn't. Oh, it's there we go. Let me save. There we go. So this is our draft. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I don't think I re reached or anything, as you can tell. Like, there, we start to run. Like, I think it's right when we start running through these secondary players here, where it's like we get to like this the Cowboys pick, and it's like, okay, we're probably looking at guys that are more day two options, but we know that they're solid players in the NFL now. So it's like, are you getting a superstar? Well, in some cases, you'd be like, you could say Ossack a superstar running back. I mean, that's fair. Alpha Kamara, superstar running back. Yeah. Uh, but what are the wins above replacement? You know, it's not a valuable position. But we're getting really good players that are going to be starters. And that's kind of how, how it all works out, how it all ends up. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead. Do the YouTube thing. I'll have Edge Rankins out next week for the 2024 class. I was really excited about that one. Uh, I like that we're doing instead of like kind of bunching it up as like a preseason thing, like right before the season starts. Uh, you're going to just kind of see as I go, as I do one class, then go to the next. So you'll get it throughout the whole summer here. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.